I want to tell you a little story of a glue lines, bleed, cut, and edge lines. Um, it sounds like the most boring thing in the world. Um, it's technical terms for designers and printers. Um, and even some designers don't actually know what they are, uh, which is horrendous in my mind. Um, I've got it wrong a few times. Um, it's never cheap, but it's something that's really worth knowing because it'll help you out tremendously when it comes to retail and designing your boxes. So even not just for retail, even just printing stuff on Vistaprint uh, or Pixart or wherever you go to get your material printed. Um, it's really well worth knowing about bleed, cut uh, and edge lines. So today I'm going to give you a quick run through of what they are. Here's a sample of my hexagonal box. So I'm showing you this one, it's the most complicated box you can do. So if you can do this one, you can do any of them. It comes flat like that, you pop it up, fold it together, standard retail box, you know what they look like. Here's a few samples on the screen. There's loads of different designs. It doesn't make any difference what shape, size it is. It's all down to the machines when it comes to the design of the layout of it. So how this print is put on there, where the text goes, and where it gets glued. If I pop this open, I've torn this one so you can see it. It has a glue line down the side. That's where the glue is applied. That's what they call a glue line. It literally puts sticky glue on. But before we get to that stage, we've got to cut out the cardboard first. So this magnificent machine is a manual die cutter you would never use one. There's literally a piece of metal that goes in there and the die is the moulds of the cutter. It's a big cookie cutter. So it fits in there and you pull the handle and it cuts through the card or through the paper or whatever you put into that machine. I think that one's for making fridge magnets. What they actually look like is that. They're huge vast machines. They take on rolls of paper that are printed with your design. They're fed through and then they're cut out. So one machine will do cutting, another will do creasing um, and yeah, creasing and cutting. Um, I'm well, sorry, one machine will print, the next one will do creasing and cutting, and another one will glue. So your design will be printed across a giant sheet of paper and then cut out. There's what they call tolerances, there's movements within the machines. Hey, it's absolutely tiny, you're talking less than millimetres, but it moves a little bit, less than a millimetre in the cutting machine, it moves again on the creasing or the folding, the gluing, and so on. So you need several millimetres to make sure that your print and your text appear safely within the box that you finally have in your hand. So, glue gun, melt the glue and pour it on the side there, Just squeeze it on the edge. An industrial machine looks more like that. So that will do folding, uh, what well, the machine is actually creasing. So when you get a box that you can fold at the edge, which, uh, if you take a, uh, a butter knife, a blunt knife, and run it down a piece of cardboard along the edge of a ruler, you'll create a crease line, so you don't cut through it, but you make it foldable. That's what these machines do, they just make them foldable. They put all those wee crease lines in to make the shape that you want. And then at the end, they glue it. Literally you take a hot glue and put it down. Sometimes it's a line of double-sided tape that's applied, other times it's hot glue that's literally sprayed on there, or pressed on with a roller. And then it's folded again, pressed together to glue it. Peeled up in little packs and sent out to you, so you can then pop it up and fold it. Pretty straightforward. Let me jump out of that and I'll show you what a key line looks like. Now a key line is the file that you get from your designers or your printers. So if you go into Vistaprint, they already have one on screen for you. They will only, uh, in Vistaprint I think they only show you the safe area that you can work in. You go to somewhere like Pixart, um, it's much bigger, you have a bigger range of options, there's loads of stuff you can do with them you can download a keyline file. So it's a file specific with, to the shape of the box and size that you want. So that's why they're, they're already predefined sizes. You can't go and say, I want one that's 40 mil long and 20 mil high. Um, there's lots of bespoke places you can do that and that's what they specialize in and they will make a mold or a die to fit that exact shape and size that you want. It's very expensive, but you can do it. Uh, but typically you will pick one that's a standard shape and size because they can they already have the cutter for it, they have the machine set up for the glue line, for the folding, the creasing, all that. So it's all preset, so it's much cheaper. You pick a shape and size, uh, put your design on it. To put your design on it, you need editing software, and you can do it in any, any editing software, but Photoshop is fairly standard, or Illustrator, something like that. If we zoom in here, this will show you the guidelines. So what you would normally get, if I turn off everything here, There's a lot in this one. Uh, there we go. You'll get this. So, grey and white squares are transparent. There's nothing there. Guidelines. Green, red, blue, 
and gold. This one has an extra layer called finishing. It's because it's a hot foil. Uh, hot foil literally comes off like tin foil. Um, it's very, very thin, uh, even thinner than tin foil, but it comes gold, silver, color, different colors. But it's literally a, a metal which is heated and then applied just where you want it on your design. So in my case, I have gold foil text and a stone wall, which the Morn Mountains are famous for. So there's a brown background, but then there's a gold applied on top of it. So we'll see that a wee bit later on when we switch it on. But that's another layer. So that's uh, called the finishing layer. That green line is your cut line. So that's where the machine will cut it. So it can move around a little bit, you know, microns, millimeters, uh, micro millimeters, you can move around a little bit. Um, so you can't have text or anything in close to that line because there's a chance that it could be trimmed off. The red line is your bleed line. So that's the one that confuses everybody for some reason. If I put my parchment on there, so I call it parchment, this is my background, it's the brown. It can be whatever you want, it's just whatever your background is. That's applied and it goes beyond the red line. So as long as it's past that red line, it'll definitely be printed. Ideally just put it beyond the, uh, sorry, beyond the red line and beyond the green line because that green line is where your box will get cut. Everything between the red and the green may or may not appear in your final design. It might just be trimmed off. But if there's anything in there that's white, so if my design, if I move my parchment down slightly here, if my design finished there, there's a chance it will be filled up. There's a chance it won't be. Yeah, there's a chance you just end up with white paper showing underneath. So you don't want that. So that's what they call bleed. It's literally the ink bleeding into the paper. You want it to go beyond the cut line to make sure that your design is right out to the edge. It's something you can't really do at home printers. Um, you can get borderless home printing, but it makes a mess of them. So bigger machines, they just print the whole sheet and then they cut out the bit that they need. So you want to make sure that whatever is appearing as your background goes beyond the cut line uh, and certainly beyond the bleed line. Past the bleed line then, on the way in, these blue lines are more cut lines. You don't lose any material there. You don't lose any content, but you don't want something vital going across that that's going to be snipped or not be visible. But inside the bleed line, you have a safe zone. If you were to put text or something important right up to the edge of that bleed line, again, there's that movement. There could be millimeters in there where it doesn't get uh, doesn't get printed, or it gets printed beyond here, uh, and then it's messy. It's not quite as clean a print. So text typically will have three to five millimeters safe zone. So what you can do in Photoshop, same in other packages, you can apply guidelines. So these are guidelines here. I've measured from the red line to the edge of that guideline is three millimeters. So all my text will appear inside the red line and three millimeters away from it. So not right up to the red line. So those are my three safe areas. There's a safe area for the background and a safe area for my text. The dotted red lines are the creases of the folds. So they don't impact on the print, but if you've got design, especially this one where it's a bit more complicated, it's going to wrap around. I don't want my ingredients wrapping around two panels. It's a pain to read. Uh, and a fold or a crease in the text will make it hard to read as well. So I work within these guidelines. So I create these guides inside the fold lines, and that's where I put my content. So a photo of the product. Uh, if you had a hole in your box, which is a, a window so that you can see into it, or a window and then a layer of film applied to the back of it to, to create a solid window that you can't poke your finger through, um, you would have another cutout line on your drawing. So, but I'm not a big fan of them. If people see a hole in a product, uh, or in a hole in a box, and especially biscuits, they look at it and go, oh, nice biscuits, and they pick them up and squeeze them. Um, it's the dumbest thing. It's just a natural reaction. It's like, oh, biscuits, you pick it up. Anywhere there's a window or a hole, they squeeze it. Uh, when they do, they typically break them. <laughs> and then they put them back because they don't want to buy a broken biscuit. <sighs> Retailers like them because it shows off the product. Uh, as producers, they're a pain. But what you can do is put a product photograph on there. So photograph the biscuits and pop it on. And retailers are happy enough with that. So you can see mine here. Best before barcode all down the bottom. Lid, go top. Name, details. So this one is straightforward in that everything is the right way up. You have to bear in mind, sometimes you have to put the text on upside down. I've had to do this with other boxes. If I turn my box up this way, it works. If somebody would typically pick it up off the shelf and turn it up the other way, the text would be upside down. So you've got to work out which way people pick up your box and look at it. Do they pick it up and turn it around? Do they pick it up and look at the end of it? Which way do they handle your box? Whichever way it is and whichever way they stack the box, does it get stacked like that? And when the shelves are full, they put them this way? 
if they do, you need to be sure that your text on top is still readable. Is it the right way up? If you put the text on that way, it looks okay on the design, but when you pick it up and put it on a retail shelf, that's great until the shelf's full, and then they start stacking them in this way, and it looks rubbish. So you've got to work out which way people handle your box. And that will give you a completed design. So that's your outer edge or your cut line, your blade line, and your safe zone inside for text. And they'll typically be three to five mil, uh, three to five millimeters for each of those gaps. So you always end up with less space than the actual size of your box. So that's what a, a key line file is. So have a look for them, you see them on Booster Print, uh, Pixart, or get them from your designer. Uh, and it allows you to create your own designs. Even if it's just a mock-up, it doesn't have to be perfect, but work within those guidelines and you'll have a far better chance of getting a good design out the first time uh, and saving your fortune on printing costs.